All right, everyone, so this is Ross, and today I want to talk about more than just soybeans and string beans. Um, I also want to talk about just getting my trees to grow a little bit quicker. Um, so what I've been doing here is that in an orchard setting, it's really great to just throw a lot of your yard waste underneath your trees. Um, there can be some bad pathogens, I guess, in there, but overall, making the compost process or even just a slow breakdown process underneath your trees is really, really helpful. What we're going to be doing is because we have so much yard waste that we've been throwing under here, we don't really have a compost pile. It used to be right in here, you know, for those of you who remember that. And then we turned this into the Hugo culture bed. This was an already existing Hugo culture bed. So we kind of just expanded that and got rid of the compost pile. And I figured, why not just throw a lot of my yard waste underneath my trees, as I do already as it is. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this comfrey out. We're going to chop all that down to the base like we did in the front in a previous video I showed you guys. And we're going to add more and more mulch layers to this, this uh, apple tree planting here. Because they are on dwarf rootstocks, but I really want them to grow quicker. I want them to be healthier trees. I'm kind of upset that they are on dwarf rootstocks because so far they haven't really done all that much for me. It's been three years now. And this whole planting here has been a little bit uh, of a disappointment. But, you know, it's only three years. So what we did here is we took out all the soybean plants. The reason we did that is because all the soybean plants, I've been um, taking them off the, the plants over there, the actual soybeans themselves, um, for a last batch of edamame. Some of them are drying now as pods. Here's a leftover pod right here. But this whole area was literally covered with, with soybeans. And I did the whole thing last year. I, did a, I don't know if I did a video and showed you guys, but I did a whole video of dried edamame um, where I planted all the soybeans out in this underneath these grapevines we harvested all the uh, the pods when they were fully dry probably sometime in October and then what happened was uh, we dried them and made them into dried edamame the problem here is that I didn't want that to happen so we harvested all of the the uh, the plants now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we took them off and I'll show you guys over here we brought them over to the steps where I've been taking the pods off of the plants. And we also did the same thing to the string beans. The string beans are pretty much done now. Um, there's a lot of dry pods as well on the string beans that I just never got around to picking. But you can see there was all kinds of string beans in here, behind the peppers, even behind the tomatoes in here, if you guys can even get an idea of what I'm talking about. So that's exactly what I've been doing is that I've been taking all that stuff off and I'll show you guys right now. We've got all kinds of string bean plants left over. These are mostly string beans here that we took all the string beans off of and the edamame and you can see that there's also dried string beans in here and if I open this up that's one seed for next year, right? This is my seed production. It's really, really simple to do this. Um, I found it to be very easy with, with all kinds of beans because they always pretty much dry on the, on the plant. But you can see that most of this in here is just for edible edamame. I still have plenty of seeds left for next year for um, more soybean plants. But you can see on here, some of these are, yes, there are drying up. We still have to get most of the edamame off, or the soybeans off of here to make it an edamame. And then there's all this leftover biomass, all this leftover plant material that we'll then take. And it's just a constant process, guys, of me putting all this stuff underneath my trees. You know, some things I'm kind of happy with how they grow. You know, like my peaches are vigorous as it is. They're on standard rootstocks. I don't really need to do that. You know, I have added many layers of wood chips to this, and I think that's pretty good for a sufficient amount of time. But the apple trees, that's one thing I really want to grow. You know, so we're gonna add all that in here. We're also gonna add probably some to this kiwi vine to get this a little bit of a head start, a little bit of a, a jump start, I should say. Anywhere that we can put these things that need it is really, really beneficial. Like maybe the pawpaw trees, right? The pawpaw trees, I'm constantly taking 
this comfrey plant here, chopping it back and dumping that right underneath the pawpaw. And it's just a really, really great way to get these slow growing, um, slower maturing trees into maturity much faster. So yeah, that's just what I'm doing today, guys. I just wanted to share that with you. Again, a little bit of orchard management by adding fertility. You know, I think the soybeans really didn't add all that much fertility to this area, even though they do fix nitrogen. You know, and same thing with the string beans, they do fix some nitrogen, but I think most of that is in the plant now. So by having it in the plant, the only way you can really make use of it is by putting it underneath something to have it break down. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This was this little short video of uh, what I'm doing today.